The Daily Wire released a new show called Mr. Bertram, and I'm not sure if I can play the trailer for you without getting a copyright claim, but I'm going to play just a small, small snippet. Now, before I play the tra trailer for you, I just want you to take a guess as to what joke, what joke they choose to include in this trailer. Just take a wild guess. I'll give you a hint. It's the one joke that conservatives have. So, without further ado... I found some really great school uniform options to avoid misgendering. Ooh, what about their allergies? Maybe those days could be lactose intolerant. Mm, no, we can't say intolerance. We have a zero tolerance policy for mentioning intolerance. Okay, that's all you need to see. Um, so yeah, pronoun jokes. Uh, not even a good one, right? Um, they didn't stick to the regular formula of my pronouns are blank blank. Um, just mm, not great, right? Now, the reason why I bring this up is because, um, you know, the reviews are starting to come in and apparently it's good, but there is a bit of a problem with it. Now, this is from Worth It or Woke. It's kind of like Rotten Tomatoes, but for uh, conservatives with brain rot. And it seems like they like it. They gave it a 72 out of 100. Uh, and on the woke meter it has a 97.5% base. So that's pretty prestigious if you are a right-wing show. But there is a problem, and they bring this up towards the bottom. Um, woke elements. They always make sure to tell you what exactly is woke about this show. And for a Daily Wire show, there is actually woke elements. So this episode introduces Mr. Bertram's gay ex-Navy buddy. It's mostly for laughs, as Mr. Bertram jokes about him being the kind of gay that is okay because he served during the Don't Ask, Don't Tell era. Okay. So... We have a red flag here. There's a gay person in the show. Now, they're making fun of him, and he's kind of like the butt of the joke. So take that as you will. But, I mean, the presence of a gay person, uh, I was told by conservatives, is grooming. Because what if you're watching this and your kid sees it? They're going to see a gay person on TV, and they're going to become homosexual like this. That's literally what happens. There is a viral video from a lady who has a lot to say. So uh, this person took a clip of somebody who is not very happy with the gay character. <laughs> I'm surprised, honestly. But I am, because they put in uh, a gay character. and Shameful. I'm just, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to watch it. Yeah, I have, all I, they have every TV show. Why not, guys, honestly? Gays have every TV show. So, um, you know, why give them this extra one? Don't you guys hate how gays are in every TV show? It's literally their shows, and every single character is gay and trans. I mean... <laughs> I'm not going to watch it. Uh, yeah, I have all I They have every TV show. Why not give true. the conservatives just one where we right? don't have to hear about it? Right? I mean... <laughs> I agree with her. I think she's making some really sound points. You know, this was supposed to be the one safe space where we can watch TV and not have homosexuality crammed down our throats. And then they put a gay guy in here, right? And we have to hear about his homosexuality. It's just, it's ridiculous. Now, she's going to play the example of the gay person for us. Now, based on what she's saying, you know, you would think maybe he's trying to educate us about homosexuality or maybe he's having sex with another guy. But, you know... It's just like a gay dude, and he's kind of a caricature of a gay person, I, I guess. Anyways, I'll, I'll let her finish. So this is why I will not be watching Mr. Bertram. Excellent. Reyes, uniforms? I lengthen the drawstrings and reinforce the elastic in the waistband, sir. Affirmative, supportive, mm -hmm. and forgiving. Hey, wait a minute. Did you just put me on uniforms because I'm gay? Yes. But you're also part of the unit. We didn't care what you did with your unit. We didn't ask. You didn't tell. <clears throat> and for some of you, like, that's fine enough. But I'm not going to tolerate that character. <laughs> I'm just not. I just, I, I won't be around it. That's all. So, I'm just saying, as a Christian, from my perspective, not even this. Mm. See, the problem is that you already <laughs> invited the homosexual demon into your home by playing that on your TV. So now you're going to have to do all the work of calling the pastor in to come pray. 
um, have somebody cleanse the house, maybe bring some candles. Otherwise, that homosexual spirit is going to possess you or possibly your husband. So that is a problem. Now, um, on the subject of Mr. Bertram, it's kind of being labeled this anti-cancel culture. Jeremy Boring is kind of like, listen, for decades, no network would touch Adam Carolla's animated sitcom, Mr. Bertram, for fear of offending the wrong people. So, you know, this is this is their attack on cancel culture. They're saying, fuck everybody else. We're going to say what we want to say. You know, we're not going to cancel anyone. Every single person can say what they want. And even if we disagree with them, it's it's OK. We're going to put them on the show. Fuck cancel culture. Except the problem is that one of the stars has been canceled. The anti-cancel culture cartoon canceled one of its own stars. Um, now, you might not know immediately. Let me pull up the trailer again, actually, because at one point, they kind of list the stars. Where is that? It's right here. Okay, so you have all, all these stars. Now, missing here, conspicuously absent, Candace Owens. They took Candace Owens out of the fucking show and effectively canceled her. So I'm not sure if Worth It or Woke caught this, but I would include cancel culture in the woke elements here, right? Now, on top of that, there are reports, uh, I believe that Glenn Greenwald is actually the one who broke the story, that the Daily Wire has issued a gag order of sorts to Candace Owens or sent her a cease and desist. I'm not 100% sure what the specifics are. But um, not really the most um, anti-cancel culture cartoon if you're going to be canceling your own fucking stars. Let's read a little bit of this. This is from uh, J.M. McNabb of Cracked. Presumably pitched as a QAnon-friendly family guy or maybe king of the hill, but for that one uncle who won't say where he was on January 6th, Adam Carolla's new animated series, Mr. Bertram, just hit Netflix uh, or Daily Wire Plus, the streaming service run by the right-wing publication that once bemoaned the hysteria around climate change, but also suggested that woke Eminem signal the end of the world as we know it. Uh, for some reason, Carolla has been clinging to his Mr. Bertram character, a gruff high school shop teacher, for literal decades. It began as a radio voice, later became a Crank Yankers puppet, and was eventually the focus of Bertram, a 2011 animated Fox pilot that was never picked up. Oh, I didn't know that he was actually a Crank Yankers uh, puppet. I mean, it's I feel like it's a boring character. You know, Jeremy Boring is insinuating that networks don't want to touch this because it's just too offensive. Um... Based on what I've seen, it's not like they just do the anti-woke jokes, but other shows are much more offensive. I mean, if you watch Rick and Morty or some of these other cartoons, South Park, they're way more offensive. My suspicion as a biased person would be that they didn't want to touch this show because it's fucking boring. It's really boring. And also, I hate that animation style. Um, it's fine, but it's just overdone. So they're not even trying to be original. And if you watch a lot of the Daily Wire Plus content, it's super derivative. Like they have a ripoff of Bluey, but a conservative version. They have a ripoff of other shows as well. There's a there's a really great um, episode from Some More News where they talk about this and how everything from the Daily Wire is derivative and it's hollow and it's just virtue signaling, right? It's not about entertainment. It's about reaffirming their pre-existing biases. But... um. Weirdly, the fact that this mid cartoon was rejected by Fox 13 years ago has something uh, has become something of a selling point for the Daily Wire, which is weird because that's not really a selling point. Right. I could see how you would say it's a selling point. People often say, you know, well, J.K. Rowling, she pitched Harry Potter and it was rejected and now she was very successful. Um, but I mean, she's not a great writer. And I think that Harry Potter really benefited from the movies. Uh, I didn't grow up with Harry Potter, so I can't like. I can't speak to that, but I did watch Sean's video on the Harry Potter books and how so many plot lines are inconsistent and whatnot, and maybe you don't pick up on that as much as a kid. So I could see how it would be a selling point, but in, but in this instance, you have this like curmudgeity old boomer, Adam Carolla, who hates everyone and thinks everything is woke and is always complaining. And yeah, this just doesn't, this doesn't seem good. It's been done. American Dad is a show about a conservative, which is funny. I, I, I just, I don't know, right? So... Let's see, uh, which makes it sound like Mr. Bertram is some kind of a suppressed work of political provocation and not a run of the mill animated sitcom that just happens to have included some lame pronoun jokes and catty references to the Green New Deal in a sweaty effort 
to justify its stale existence with manufactured controversies. Yeah, I mean, do we really need a cartoon version of the pronoun joke? We have every comedian doing the pronoun joke. We have every single conservative doing the pronoun joke. Do we really really need to hear it in a cartoon version? It's the same fucking joke. And there are other jokes in this as well, but like a lot of this is just grievances that Adam Carolla has as this conservative uh, dipshit. And that's not going to resonate with a lot of people, which I think is why networks rejected it. Perhaps the most contentious element of the show is its casting. Like some of the Island of Misfit toys for canceled celebrities, the Mr. Burcham cast features Roseanne Barr in her first acting job since she was fired from the Roseanne reboot for posting ambient-fueled racist tweets, and Megan Kelly, who isn't an actress, but was ousted from NBC for defending blackface. <laughs> she also uh, vehemently uh, defended the idea that Santa is definitely not black. He's white. Uh, which, I I'm not sure if... Hide the kids for a moment. Santa's not real. But she was like, no, kids. Santa is definitely white. He's not black. You don't have to worry about that. As if Santa being black changes it for a kid. Isn't the thing about Santa that he brings you presents and that's what's good? I mean, come on. Uh, Corolla, of course, is an outspoken advocate against the Orwellian nightmare that is cancel culture. He once stated, you should be able to share ideas without fear of being fired from your job. But one of the cast members of Mr. Bertram was fired for sharing their ideas. And that's the thing. They fired Candace Owens, right? I get that she severed ties with the Daily Wire, but they just replaced her on the show. Uh, this doesn't make any sense to me. Why would you do that? Well, it's because they are cancel culture petty little bitches. The problem with conservative comedy is that it's just not funny. And the reason why conservatives like it is because it's just for them, right? Like they feel validated when they hear these jokes. And you have to pick or choose, right? You can either have grievance politics where you hit all of the, you know, the fucking anti-woke, anti-cancel culture, all this bullshit, and you get in those conservative lines, or you can have comedy, but you can't have them both. And I think that's what conservatives need to realize. <laughs>